the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, we lift your name up, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Be in our right mind, Lord. Thank you for just giving us travel mercy, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Because of who you are, Lord, we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Will you bless the Lord at all times? Hallelujah. Will his praise continue to be in your mouth? Our soul will boast in the Lord, and the humble will hear thee thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. God has been too good to us to sit down on our praise. Bless the King of kings. Bless the Lord of lords. Bless our Father. Bless the bread of life. Bless our creator. Bless our deliverer. Bless our fortress. Bless our everlasting God. Bless the great I am. Bless the Holy One. Bless Emmanuel. Bless our way maker. Bless the miracle worker. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be saying? I need some folks that ain't afraid to give God some praise. Lift your hands and give him some praise. Hallelujah. You know your praise will silence the enemy. Hallelujah. You know how I know it? Because I tried it and it works. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I find him to be the doctor in the sick room. I find him to be the lawyer in the courtroom. I find him to be the man of God when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. I find him to be the, the anchor when I'm standing on my feet in the ship. I find him to be the resting place, our rock, our solid rock. He's our everything. Hallelujah. 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 We are to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. No matter what you're going through, saints, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We adore your name, Lord. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Have you been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let your Shekinah glory fill this place, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Touch every heart and mind. We lift our hands and we lift our voice to you. We give you all the glory, Lord. For all the praise, Lord. We love you, Lord. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. 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 In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. In the presence of the joy, there's freedom. There is liberty. Hallelujah. All you got to do is tap into the presence of the Lord. God is not going to force us to be in his presence. We have to invite him in. Lord, we just invite you in this service today. We say, have your way, show up and show out. Let your Shekinah glory fill this place. As you stand into your feet, let's go into prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify your name and give you all the glory and honor. That's do your name. Lord, we worship you in spirit and truth today. Lord, we ask that your presence fill this place like never before. Let your Shekinah glory fill this place, Lord. Let your Holy Ghost fire fall down today, this morning, Lord. Lord, as we approach your presence, Father God, humbly, we ask you to forgive us all for our sins. 
We say that we confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us all and cleanse us from unrighteousness. You said when we know to do good, God, that it is sin if we don't do it. Lord, create in all of us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us. Remove any stony, hard heart, bitter anger, jealousy, whatever it is that's not like you, Father God. We ask you right now to remove it right now in the name of Jesus. And give us a heart of flesh, your heart, Lord, of love, joy, peace, self-control, kindness, peace, patience, long-suffering, Father God, your heart. Lord, we ask right now, you said, ask and we shall receive. We ask, Father God, that you touch every heart, Lord, every mind today. Remove the scales off their eyes, Father God. Deliver, set free, Father God, whatever we need you already know. Father God, we seek in your face right now for answers, for wisdom, for guidance, whatever it is, Father God. You said knock and the door shall be open. We're knocking right now on your door right now, for, on your heart right now, Father God, to open doors that need to be open, close doors that need to be shut. We're knocking on your heart right now, Father God, to guide and lead us, Father God. We ask you to fill us with your Holy Ghost, your power, your anointing, your grace, your mercy, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We just thank you for just who you are. We know your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lord, we just thank you for your word that's sharper than a two-edged sword. And no matter what we are going through, because we all going through, we ask, Father God, that we continue to put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God, because we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let's put on a helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the feet that's planted for the gospel of peace, Father God, the sword of the Spirit, and most all the time, pray. Pray at all times. Pray in the Spirit. Lord, we just want to thank you for everyone here. We thank you. We thank you for our bishop. Continue, continue to comfort him. Comfort him, Lord. We know it's hard. We know it's hard. Comfort him, Lord, and give him your peace that surpasses all his understanding. Father God, continue to guide and lead him and fill him with your Holy Ghost power to preach your unadulterated truth in season and out season, in season and out season to correct, to edify, and to rebuke. Lord, continue to anoint the elder on high, Father God. Give him a right now word to preach your undulterated truth this morning, Father God. Give him that fire, Father God. Let it be all of him, of you, Father God, and not of you. May him decrease and you increase in his life. Most of all, we thank you for the officials. We thank you for their faithfulness, Father God. May they continue to be ye steadfast, unmovable, always working in the work of the Lord, knowing their labor is not in vain. We thank you for the whole household of faith. Continue to bless each and every one of them. Touch them. Let them know you love them, Father God. And we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you could turn your Bibles to Psalms 148. Psalms 148. And when you have it, say amen. Psalms 148. And we're going to do 1 through 5, and then we're going to do 13 through 14. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of life. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Five, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Saints, we were created to praise the Lord. If you can't praise him here on earth, I don't know what you're going to do when you get to heaven, because we were created to praise him. So you ought to get your practice now. Verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory above the earth and the heavens. Verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. So I, God created all of us to praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, the praise team will come forth in 
they will praise ye the Lord. And God created you to praise ye the Lord. And the next voice you hear will be Elder Russell Slade. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, don't stop praising him. Oh, don't stop praising the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, we give you glory. Oh, we give you glory. Somebody tell me, Lord, give me, we give you glory. We give you glory. How many know that the Lord is my light and salvation? I'm who shall I fear? And whom shall I be afraid? Oh, come on, give God the glory up in here. Open up your mouth in here. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, hallelujah. Up in here, come on. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? And I will wait on him. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. The Lord is the Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Yeah. Who shall I be afraid? Hey, Lord God. The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? I will wait. I will wait on you. Come on, somebody been out there waiting for a while. I will wait. I will trust him. I will trust in you. Till the day I die, yes, I will. I will trust in you. Listen, and I will remain. I will remain. Come on. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Say it again, church. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see. The Lord is the Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Hey God, who shall I be afraid? Hey Lord God, the Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Hey Lord God, I will wait on. I will wait on you. Come on, I know you've been waiting. I will trust you. I will trust in you. Till the day I die, yes, I will. I will trust in you. And I will remain. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. For restoration, say it again. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see. Now listen, how do you get your praise on? Come on, you're in the sanctuary of God's praise. You're in the praise of his people. Come on, you got to lift it up and talk to the God that's in your corner. Look, we said our hope on you. We said our hope on your love. We said our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Help me out. We said our hope. We said our hope on you. We said our hope on your love. We said our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. That's why we said our hope on you. We said our hope on your love. We said our hope on the one. 
Somebody been waiting out there. You've been trusting God. You've been believing God for a miracle. Maybe something simple is just a better relationship. But sometimes you got to open up your mouths and ask God for what you really want. And sometimes you got to tell God what I want ain't what you want for me. And what I want ain't what I need. All I need is you, Jesus. Help me out, team. I will wait. I will wait on you. I will wait on you. Come on, I will trust. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Hallelujah. 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 All over here. Come on, lift up a stand before God. You in his presence right now. You in his presence. Come on. Wait on him. He'll feel you. He will feel you. You got to trust him. Lord, I trust you, Lord. Lord, I trust you with my life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I will remain confident. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God, has anybody ever fallen in love, fallen in love with Jesus? Hallelujah. Falling in love, it caused you something. Hallelujah. It caused Jesus nothing to fall in love with us. He said it was because of his love. Not because how much we loved him, but because he loved us. And it was the best thing that ever happened to us. Thank you. 
falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus. Was the best thing I've ever, I ever done. I'm falling in love. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. Falling in love. Yes, Lord. With Jesus. And in his arms, I never disconnected. And in his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather, I'd rather be in his arms. Somebody said, no place. It's no place I'd rather be. Than wrapped up in your arms, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Our God, 
See, that's the type of God we serve. We serve a God that's greater, right? He's a healer. He's good. Hallelujah. Mm. He's a great God. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Come on, you know the song. Worship with us. Stand to your feet and give him the glory. He want to see you get your praise. You was created to pray. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light Darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we we'll see how great. How great is our God. is in his hand beginning and the end beginning and the end the Godhead three and one Father, Spirit and Son the Lion and the Lamb the Lion and the Lamb how great is our God sing with me how great Is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great. Yeah. 
He's a good God. He's been good to you. When you wanted to throw the towel in, he said, "Uh uh-uh. When the devil said you wasn't worthy to praise him, he said, open up your mouths and give me a praise. Somewhere in the back of your cave, in the back of your mind and your resources, God is your source. How great. How great. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Whew. I don't think they finish. I don't think they finish. I don't think they finish in here. Lord, you're worthy. Come on, I got to magnify you while I got breath in my body. Roko top, mama, mama, I take. I can praise you. I'm not in my sick bed right now. Come on now, I'm not in a straight jacket. I'm clothed in my right mind. So I can give you glory right now. Somebody got to tell you this morning. Come on, somebody got to tell you that Jesus loves you. That Jesus love you. Somebody got to warn you of the things coming upon you. Hey, Shakota, mama, mama, tate. Hey, God, have your way. Woo! Rakata, mama, 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 tate. God is a good God. Woo! Look at them. See, sometimes it's like this. It's under a moment when you're under the radar. And the Holy Ghost wants to do something for just a few people. There's a few people out there right now that know you want the Holy Ghost to do something, help you to get to where you need to go. You are tired of your circumstances. You're tired of your situations. You're tired of living a defeated life. And you want God to do something. You want God to turn it around. Come on, somebody say, God, turn it around. Turn it around, man, in my finances. And my situations, my circumstances are not bigger than you, God. Turn it around, Lord. I see them turning around. Somebody turn it around because they have faith in God to turn it around for. And sometimes you got to do it. You got to prove to your role sometimes. God is up to something. God is up to something. He's doing something new in me. In order, he got to do something new in you before he can do new in the people that are walking behind you. Whoo, shake hey. The next time you turn around, and you turn around, make sure you don't do a half a circle. Don't you do a full circle, because you'll be right back where you started. Turn halfway and say, God, it's up to you what you're going to do with this moment. 
I surrender to you, Lord. I give it all to you right now. I'm tired of living a stagnated life of mine. My dreams don't seem. It's time to dust off my shoulders. Shoulders of fear. Misplacement. I want a revival. God is magnificent. And he will move on your behalf. His power is matchless. Won't God do it? His matchless powers. His strength is found in you now. He passed the mantle to you. We want a powerful word today from the Lord. We want a powerful word from you today, Lord. Not from the preacher, but from your word, Lord. I would like to honor Jesus Christ, the head of my life. My redeemer, my healer, my deliverer. He's a merciful God, and he's gracious. He's slow to wrath. He's loving and kindness. Above anything I can ever think of and imagine, God is above it all. He's a great God. Hallelujah. I'd like to honor our bishop here, Bishop John Briscoe. If I could get you to stand to your feet just for one second as we honor the man of God. I think it's fitting to honor somebody that's worthy of double honor, that's been laboring in the house of God for long as some of us are aged in this building. Some of you are not old enough. If I could get you to stand to your feet, sir, you got legs on your leg. You can stand up. Yes, sir. You can stand up. We honor the bishop. In Jesus' name. We honor you, bishop. We're not worshiping you. We honor you because you are worthy of double honor. You have proved that to God. And since God is pleased with you, we can say we honor you. We honor your wife in her absence. We know her presence is always pressing upon this foundation, founders, founders of restoration. Amen. And we bless and honor you that this is the place where we choose to worship. Amen. I would like to honor my wife as well, Minister Latasha, my wife. And y'all probably haven't heard in a while. My hand plucked pearl off the top of heaven's gate. Don't nobody belongs to you. God gives people to you. And you just got to do the right thing when they're in your presence. I would like to honor the ministerial staff completely being on your post. Unmovable. Always abounding in the word of God, man. Your wives and your husbands. The deacons and their wives and their husbands. But most important, the host, household of faith that come to hear what well, thus says the Lord. I pray that a, a rim of word will come from the throne of grace that will touch you where you at as they begin to open up your, your supernatural ear gates. You'll hear a word, a crisp word, a word of relief, a word of revival, a word that will breathe straight from the throne of grace that will cause you to live again. Whew. I just honor JWM. I honor you too, young man. Kenny. I honor y'all, man, for call, answering the call. TJ, we, we honor y'all for answering the call. Amen. The whole household of faith, we honor you for coming out to hear what thus says the Lord. We pray that you receive a word in Jesus' name. Okay. If I can get you to turn your Bibles to Ezekiel. 31. Amen. This is the last time you'll be standing. If you want to stand for the word too, it's good to stand for God. We didn't stood for everything. Our enemies, tricks. I know some of us are dealing with some things that are, that are stopping us from standing, but we're not going to claim those things. We're going to claim victory over our circumstances. Amen. And there ain't nothing God can't do. And there ain't nothing too hard for God. Amen. The Bible says in Ezekiel 31, 37 verse 1, excuse me. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. He set me down in the midst of the valley, 
which was full of dry bones. Dear me, Father, we humbly thank you. Hide me behind your cross. Oh, God, cause these clay lips of mine to when he speak with us, says the Lord. Forgive me of all my sin and anything that I've said or done that was displeasing in your eyesight, that did not bring glory or honor to your holy and righteous name. Now, God, have your way in me. Have your way into somebody's ears gates today. Speak a word that will revive, strengthen, and encourage. Give them peace. Show them your love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have a seat now. His hand, our bones. I'm Elder Russell Slade here at Restoration Free Gospel. Amen. And I pray right now that the word will touch somebody. Amen. Touch him. Ezekiel was sent by God. That's one thing I know. And a lot of us like to go places, but we're not sent. And I know. How do I know? Because it doesn't come about any success. God said his word will go forth, right? And it will not come back void. When you know you haven't been sent by God, you'll go and you'll do something, and you'll come back, and you'll wonder why the word didn't come back the way God, you say God said it was supposed to go. Ezekiel was sent by God and sent by God in the valley of bones. The bones. They, and they would say dry bones. It was dry bones. And oftentimes, God sends us to places and dead and dry and dark places. He'll send us to these dead and dry and dark places. But you know what? Our mandate as Christians mm -hmm. right, is to be the light and to speak life into the dead, dry, and defeated and forgotten about things. We ought to say what God says concerning the circumstances and nothing else. God didn't say something to you, don't say anything else. Just say what God says concerning the circumstances. And sometimes we are set in these abandoned and forgotten about places in order to breathe life and to bring order into that chaos and that dysfunction. It's always dysfunction and chaos somewhere. You find the word of God, you'll find chaos. You find dysfunction. God has anointed our hands to build and God has given us the grace to help others build. Do you mind help building somebody else sometimes? Bishop, I love being down here with you and, and growing in God and, and help help seeing the kingdom of God building. You minister, you elder and you know you deacons and, and wives, we've been building the kingdom of God. Amen. And it's been a pleasure and an honor. And it's only by God's grace though, right? The gifts and the talents and abilities he has placed inside of us. They are not for benefits of self-exaltation. Don't exalt yourself. Don't exalt yourself. Don't you get big head syndrome because you learn a couple of scriptures and now you think you have arrived. No, not like that. Thank you, sister. Not like that. It won't work like that. The gifts and talents that are buried inside of you are to be used to glorify God. And only God. That's why God sent Ezekiel. Through you, God uses your gift to build up the old mantles and breathe life into the worn down things of life. How many believe that today? God has given you authority to rebuild and to speak life into the stagnant areas of some of our friends and family. They're stagnated. They've been, if you go back and look in 1994, if I was to go back home, I still got some people that were still on the corner purchasing drugs and alcohol from me on the corner still standing there. Stagnated. Dead. And nobody is concerned about breathing life into them. And that's what Ezekiel's assignment was. God said, I'm going to send you to a hard place. I'm going to send you a place that nobody want to go to. It's a valley full of dry bones and, and nobody in there talking to church Lego. Nobody's in there praising God. Nobody is saying hallelujah, thank you Jesus. None of that is taking place because it's dry. The word of God is not flowing there. And they don't look like you look. And they don't smell like you smell. They don't act like you act. They don't have a car like you got. They don't have a home like you got. They're not married like you are. They're running back to and fro. They're church hopping. They're womanizing. They're still doing these things, but you got to have the love 
that God had given Ezekiel. Somebody got to tell him. Somebody got to warn him. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He got to warn you of all the things that are about to come on you. And there's a better way. And Ezekiel had to come and tell him, there's a better way for you. I'm breathing life into somebody this morning. Because God has given all of us an authority. He said, I've given you authority through my word to rebuild and speak life into those stagnated areas of somebody's life. In this season, and in every season, I can truly tell you, it's important to be led by God. And everything that you both do and say. So if God didn't say it, don't you say it? Did I tell him, everybody, God told me. That's right, to go. Command you. The hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel. God's hand is on you. It's on you to do something about your family members, your cousins, your uncles, your niece, your nephew. It's on you to open up your mouth. God didn't give you a mouth just for GP, general purpose. Just to have a mouth on the side of your head. You talking the other time, now you don't want to talk about Jesus. You get on the telephone and you got a lot to say. But here's somebody dying, dry bones. I was ready and titled this word. I got a bone to pick with you. But I just felt it in my spirit. Somebody was going to Somebody was say, he talking but me. <laughs> so I asked the Lord what would be a better, and I asked the minister too. <laughs> and the minister said, yeah, somebody probably thought that, sir. So that was confirmation. But his hands, our bone. Now you notice I didn't say his hands with an S. Because we're all in one hand of God. God don't need, he can put all our bones in one hand. And speak to him and breathe life in him at one time. But God likes a thing called process. We all are work in progress. The process, man, prophesies. But it's important to be led in everything you both say and do. Because the hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel, is upon you. God will carry you through a valley, amen? He will take you to a dark place. So nobody wants to go, and you have to be that one. You have to say, God, I surrender. Take me through the valley, Lord. See, the thing is, can you enjoy the mountaintops lesser than you enjoy your valley? See, I got to praise God in my valley more than I praise him when I'm on the mountaintop. When everything is going good, when everything looks good, everybody is talking good about you. Take me through the valley, Lord. Isaiah, he knew he would take him through it. Even though these dry bones may surround you, don't be discouraged of what you see around you. Amen? This is important. God sent you there in order to do something miraculous for him. Hallelujah. See, some of y'all realize y'all are miracles in progress. God has sent you to some people and some circumstances to do a miraculous miracle in their lives. And guess what the miracle is? Open up your mouth. Prophesize to these dead bones. Can you prophesy this morning? The hand of God is with you to transform cultures. We got culture differences. You know, I'm from here and I'm from here. Who cares where you're from? Hallelujah. The thing is, do you got Jesus with you? We always talk about, we got geographical locations. I'm from D.C. I'm from Baltimore. You'll bust my head because I tell you I'm from St. Mary's. Geographical location will get you in trouble with God trying to get you to your destination. Don't let nobody tell you where you're from, and that makes a big difference. Remember when we got locked up, brother? We was in there, and we told them we was from St. Mary's, and they said, we from D.C., and we ready to bust you up. I just stood on there. I'm from St. Mary's, from Annapolis. I don't like Annapolis dudes. Stay away from me. Cool. I don't want to be around you either. Praise God. Just keep praying for you. But, but that's a geographical location area that we all got. It's like clicking up, you know? You can't sit on this side of the room because guess what? You ain't loud enough. Hallelujah. But I like the loud praises over here. I like the people over here as excited, just as excited as I am. Come on, don't let them be louder than y'all on that side. Don't let them do that to y'all this morning. Let them know you got to praise inside of me, that you got to get it out. Got to get it out because the hand of God is with you. Speak life into your workplaces. Been going to work for a long time. I hope your mouth ain't been shut up as long as you've been working. Some of us have been working for a while and you haven't told nobody but Jesus. And you wonder why things are going because you're not speaking life. Speak life over your family. 
My God, you might be the head and not the tail, but you've got to speak life into your family. you got to want them to have great things in the Lord. You want them to have a, re a, a, a remarkable relationship with God. you got to speak life into your dreams and your visions. Come on, somebody speak, man. Somebody speak today. Speak life into those forgotten dreams, your visions, and your goals. Stay the course, though, and speak life to the valley of dry bones. Amen? Say what God is saying, though. Restore hope in others. Help others to fulfill their dreams. See, some of us are just like Matthew. He's a tax collector, right? He had money for a reason. God chose him for a reason because God wanted him to use his money for the kingdom. See, if people don't realize you might just be set here with your money. So don't be stingy with your money because God might have put you in the house of God to bless the house of God and the people in the house. He had 11, he had, Peter had 11 others standing with him on the day of Pentecost, right? When he spoke life and the Holy Ghost fall on all of them. It was 11, and think about their relationships. I think it was Math Matthias, how you say his name? Matthias? He, he was in there. He was chosen after Judah. And guess what? There's not one spot mentioned in the Bible. You can go look where it talks about what he did in the Bible. There's nothing even mentioned about him. But you think he was mad? He followed Jesus anyway. Are you willing to follow Jesus even if they don't, you don't get no accolades and no pats on your back? Can you still follow him when you're in the valley and everybody's given up and deserted you? It's time to follow Jesus regardless. You have to say, I'm going all the way with Jesus. Stay the course. Fulfill your dream. It's time to build it. I know it's time to dust some of these things off in your life. You've been holding a lot of dust and a lot of unforgiveness and a lot of things in your heart that don't need to be there. It's time to dust off every old dream that you had and you put it on the shelf. Because you had to do some other things. You had to take care of the kids. Kids are grown now. Now what you going to do with that old dream that you put up on the shelf? And you packed it away. It's been lying dormant. Every God-given dream and vision and plan has been sitting stagnated and collecting dust on your shelf. And now I say that because your faith is pulling back. And everything seems to be dusty. God wants to breathe new life into your old vision. See, God has a blueprint in your life, and he's trying to work through you. See, he's trying to work through man. He's trying to work through the woman. He's trying to work through the saved, the redeemed. He's trying to work through you, but you won't let his plan go forward because you're so interested in your own plan. My plan, my vision, my goals, my life, my wife, my kids, my job, my, 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 my. Sound like that old song, my, 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 So you saying all day long, mine. What about what the Lord wants for you? Can you surrender your my, my, my to the Lord? God gives new lives into old mantles. They may have been passed a long time ago. You may have gotten this mantle from your grandfather. Amen. He said, look, I just thank God. You got this from but God rebuilds dreams. He restores vision. And God will reverse the past and charge it to your future. He'll reverse your past. Your destiny belongs to him. He wants to propel you forward in him. Not without him. He's propelling you. God is catapulting people. He's taking a slingshot and he's pulling it back. Boom, and he's letting you get back to where you were like 20 years ago. And you say, I'm going back to school and I'm finishing that degrees. Oh, man, I'm, my, my, my boy ass and found me. Look at that. Now I can surrender all that old stuff I was thinking about that I was never going to be with another man. And boy ass is knocking at your door now. And he's talking about Jesus. And you telling him, you better don't come around right here playing with me. Don't play with me. I ain't got time for this. And, and boy, this is knocking, trying to get in, trying to let you know. But see, the problem is, I don't think we're worrying about the boy ass. We like them wild and rough out there. We like bikers and stuff. We like dudes on bikers and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm being serious, though. We like sometimes we like the rougher things in life. Amen. We like we don't like them come towards the way God will send them towards. Because God don't have no problem directing somebody to you. 
But the thing is, you got to have enough spiritual discernment to know when they come to you. You got to check all your checks. You got to make sure they love God like they said they love him. They'll turn around and try to pull you right out of the situation. They'll try to unplug your God. You will plug them to the Lord, and they'll try to plug you right out the wall. How to get you, try to get you cross barriers you haven't crossed in a while. I'm just going to lay at the foot of your bed tonight. I ain't going to just I'm going to lay right there. I'm going to sleep on your couch tonight. I ain't going to, fr- I'm not going to go upstairs. Only if I need to use the bathroom. I got a bathroom right there, though. It's, there's one at the corner. No, I need to use that bathroom because that toilet paper upstairs is too ply. You'll make every excuse not to hear the truth. We got to be careful. The demons, they come in disguises. Demon will come as your best friend until he can get in. And after he or her gets in, all hell breaks loose. Especially if you ain't got no prayer life with God. You ain't got no prayer life in God, you're in trouble. You don't know how to pray. You can start dialing numbers. Hey, Pastor, what are you doing? Hey, man, Pastor, sleep. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. You should be on your knees praying. I'm not saying you can't call the bishop, but my God, call the man 3 in the morning. You could be praying yourself. What's up with your prayer life? That's why it's important. And Minister um, Elizabeth, I honor you and those that are, are committed to the prayer. And I know because it does work. It, do, it works, man. I mean, it's time that you, gonna, you, you don't have nothing else. You got to dig deep down inside of you and find a word. You got to find something. You can't let the devil just take you out of pocket, take you out of character. Then he won't baby use that blueprint he's trying to do through you. He gives new life into old mantles. He's trying to take you forward with him. It's time to accelerate with God. Forget about the past and execute upon the dream. Start where God tells you to begin, too. I want to talk about that. Wherever God tells you, look at this. This can be a place. How can I say it? Sister Darling, that can help me. In space, I guess when a rocket takes off, uh, what would that be, a landing? Just give me a second. I got it. Holy Ghost, help me and come over with you. Everybody got to have a start. That's what I'm trying to say. It's a luncheon pad. That is. So wherever God sets you at, it's just a luncheon pad. You know, but if you want to you want to go to space, you don't want to start the lunch pad. You want to already be up in space. So we'll skip the luncheon pad and go straight to space and lose our mind. Because see, the things in space are not like they are here on earth. You know what really gets me? That we understand there are physical laws in place. The natural law. What goes up must come down. Amen? It's natural. You throw something, it's going to fall. But in space, they're no longer dealing with that. So why do you want to get to a place of comfort where you had to no longer deal with that? See, some of us like to skip earth and go straight to heaven. Because you won't be dealing with sin no more. But first, you've got to turn your sins over down here to even think about getting up there. You got to make your life right with God before you even think about getting there. You can't get away and get by and get around all the things that God's trying to teach you here on earth and just make it to heaven. So wherever you at, if it's a luncheon pad, use it as a good place to take off from. Amen. Don't, don't, don't burn no bridges. Don't try to take nobody with you. I don't need nobody to go in space with me. Well, I need somebody to go with me. If I was chosen to go somewhere, then I need to go. If God sent me, like when he sent Abraham, why the, what was Lot, right? Lot said, I got to go. God did not tell Lot to go nowhere with him. Abraham chose him, and sometimes we choose some people to go with us and go places, and we cause more problems in their life, and then we turn around and let him pick somewhere to go. I think your brother preached, uh, Bishop James, the pastor, he preached, um, Getting rid of your lot. You got to get rid of your lot sometime. Lot was not designed to go with you. Everybody is not designed to go where God is trying to take you at. So I take you to a higher place in him. And the focus is not on them. 
Lot chose Sodom, and look what happened to him in Gomorrah. He chose a place of great homosexuality. Knocked on the door. How did I know? Because they knocked on the door and told him, send the men out here. We want the men. He said, I got two daughters that have never been touched before. We don't want them. Send them back in the house looking all crazy. We don't want them. We want the men. Send them out there. And he stayed around. And we got to be careful when we get in these places. These places are valleys of dry bones where God is no longer the source. He becomes a resource. So we got to understand every gift that's inside of you, every promise that you lost, we got to hope for it. Again, God wants to restore you. He wants to use you mightily. It's time to move right now. We've been stagnated too long. It's time to do what God has placed in your heart to do. When you hear God's word, harden not your heart. That's what the word says. The hand of the Lord is on you to build. Now go and build. Go and be great. Father God, God, you're my restorer. You're my reviver of dreams. I surrender my mind to you. We got to surrender our mind and our emotions. He's the Lord over our circumstances. The revival of every dead dream. The things that were long forgotten about. I repent for abandoning my gifts as a young as I repent to the Lord for abandoning my gifts that he given me. I knew I was a talker, but I would all shut up because people would always say you talk too much. I didn't know why I talked so much when I was coming up, and I still do. I didn't know. It was a gift to talk too much. The talents and stuff, I didn't know that was inside of me. God placed them inside of me. Why are you mad at me? I had to repent. I told God I would no longer function out of fear of what people had to say about me. Fear of bitterness or lack. I had to surrender all this stuff over to him. He was my comforter then. He was my shield. I had to remember what God could do. And I told him I will follow your voice from now on, God. I will do what you ask me to do and nothing else. Say what you ask me to say. Even in a very dry situation. That's what he says in Ezekiel 37 too. It says, and caused me to pass by them around the butt. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. He caused me to pass by them around about them. Sometimes you just got to walk around them. Take a look at them and walk around them. Go where God wants you to go at. Don't worry about them, though. They there. They're going to be there. Many of them. In the open valley, because the valley was very open. But they was dry. They didn't have no spirit. They didn't have any type of spirituality. They didn't know the Lord like you know the Lord. I know the two things in here. One, that there were very many bones in the valley. Two, the bones were very dry. Later on, you find out that Ezekiel 37, 11 says this. It says, then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry. And our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Can you imagine being cut off from God? Cut off from your tribe. Cut off from those that love the Lord like you love. And you got to hang back in that world again and do these worldly things all over again. And you knew how they pricked you. They pricked your heart when God came into your life. And yet you got to go back and experience this dryness again. These bones were very dry. They represented the spiritual condition of Israel during that time. Not Ezekiel during that time. Ezekiel didn't have dry bones. Because Ezekiel was going to do what the Lord told him to do. Ezekiel was led to do this. He was th it was not a representation nor a reflection of his present heart condition or his present season. In fact, the bones in the valley were a reflection of Israel's spiritual state and season only at that time. Sometimes God will send you to somebody else's dry valley in order to speak life to them. Have you ever had to go to a cousin, a friend, or uncle, or somebody and say, man, there's some dry ways you got. You got to change them, sir. You got to come to church. Why don't you come to church and just hear the word for yourself? You know, or, or are you afraid? Are you that fearful? 
or what they might say to you. They might say, well, we ain't cousins no more. Cool. Cool. Jesus had to tell them, my, but he said, my family, my, you know what I mean? My mother and father, he talked about his brothers and sisters. He said, my brothers and sisters are those that love the Lord, right? Not those that are in the world and doing this. It is a calling for us to go out. It's our mandate to get to these people and revive their dry bones. But they're not your brother. You can't call them a brother or sister until they've been washed in the blood of Jesus. They got to be washed. They got to confess Jesus Christ as both Lord and Savior. Been baptized and maybe full with the Holy Ghost. Don't always happen in that order. So don't be going around calling everybody brother and sister. I mean, you calling demons, you my brother. And I'm not talking to the person. I'm talking about the spirit. Because, see, no one comes to the Father unless the spirit draws. He got to be drawn. And why are you not being drawn? All this word is going out. We got social media. You got the phones now. Everything. Everybody should know what the Lord is trying to say to the church and to the people. Sometimes God will send you to somebody that's dry valley in order to speak life. When God sends you into someone else's valley, he doesn't send you broken. He doesn't send you dry. He doesn't send you defeated. He doesn't do it. He doesn't send you in that matter. He sends you with full of power. You got to have the Holy Ghost power. And that's how he sends you, full of power. And I know Ezekiel was sent by God to speak life into those dry and defeated situations. Them bones reflected the spiritual, emotional, and physical state of Israel during that time there. Their hope as a nation was dry and withering away. They had no more hope. And as a people, they were emotionally drained and spiritually slain and physically defeated. Can you let me say that again? They were emotionally drained. You know, it's so hard to do bad and evil. It drains you. It drains you. Somebody say, how you doing? Good morning. You go, don't be talking to me. Don't talk to me. That drains you after a while. Stresses you out. Puts you in a situation where you just keep on going deeper and deeper into defeat. Because it, it's draining you. Spiritually slain. Look at that. Physically defeated. These conditions of the bones in the valley, that's the same, very dry. See, we got to get sent to these very dry places where the visions and the dreams of the people have been defeated for so long that success seems to be far stretched. You, you go back, you go, and you might tell your cousin, well, if you get saved right now, you might can make it in. You still have a chance. The Bible says scarcely the righteous make it in. You might got to tell them, man, come on, mama. It may be mama, you hear me? Mama, you got to get baptized, mama. I'm sorry. Daughter, you got to get baptized. You got to do a son. You got to get baptized. I'm sorry. You got to love God. You got to get a relationship now before he comes back. Don't care what they say. They might say you crazy. You, they might say you still smoking that angel dust. What's wrong? You back on that stuff, man? You, no, I'm not on that stuff, man. I'm just telling you what thus says the Lord. And then that's why when you go to somebody, be prepared. God doesn't send unprepared people to the people that are lost. Go with a word from the Lord. Open the Bible up. Open your mouth up and stop being afraid. God has chosen you to go to the people. Speak life into the dry and defeated situations. Sometimes you're sent to these places to restore these visions and dreams. Where, where success seems far-fetched. Sometimes God will send you, just like Ezekiel, to deliver a message of hope to the valley full of dry bones. God has put his words in your mouth, and that's all you need. And his fire is in your hand in order to rebuild, revive, and restore. Restoring what? The promise of God. Restoring his hope, his plans. Why? Because you as agent, and it's time to build again. He's told you. He's chosen you. You're my agent, and I need you to go. See, sometimes we just got to sit a little while longer and hear what thus says the Lord. See, some people, you just can't, you, they, they don't want to stay in the church unless they're the lead or they're the head. I got to be the head of this. If that's the case, I would have been supposed to gone. I'm under the man of God. Because the Bible told me, it said, if I treat his, 
Here, give me mine. And guess what? Even if you don't give me mine, he already gave me enough. He don't have to give me mine. He's been too good to me. Brought me a mighty long way. Now, I remember I came, in, I came in here, my face was scratched up from one side down the other. I didn't know which way I was going. I, I felt like I was headed back to prison. I had eight years of prison time on my, my head. They say I just beat the girl brains out and knocked the teeth out and all of this. And she came in here looking pretty as a flower. And I'm scratched up. Why did I do that? Didn't know it. I know, but you you like it wasn't you, sweetie. I, I'm up on the mic. I, I didn't say it was my wife. I didn't say it was my wife. I never said you was violent. But back to the message, though. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I came in here. She was looking nice, and I was beat up from the floor. My face was scratched up. You would have thought that I got in the, uh, the dude on that Bruce Lee uh, movie, Hans, with that, with that steel hand. And that thing was down my face, man. And I had a pound of uh, cocoa butter on it. And uh, I told Bishop, man, I want to be a deacon. He said, hold tight, man. we we'll see you. <laughs> he said, I got the eye on you right now. <laughs> he said, you got yeah, you to go get it right. You got a world of trouble right now. But he, but he prayed for me, kept me in prayer, man, and talked to me. He heard me out. He encouraged me to stand strong. So sometimes we got to go and deliver a message to keep people strong. You understand? Let them know that God still has a plan for you and that God is great, you know. And we got to, we got to know when to back up and let God move. Now, now this one is going to get somebody today. It's not what it looked like. Say it's not what it looked like. It wasn't what it looked like. It wasn't my wife. Amen. 37. 37. 3. Amen. And the Bible say, and he said unto me, son of man. Listen to the question he asked, son of man. Can these bones live? God was asking him, can these bones live? He answered, though, he said, oh, Lord God. Thou knowest, you know of God. In other words, it is possible for God to revive and restore what has been dead, long forgotten, for many years, and cause them to live again. But you got to ask yourself, can your dreams live again? I think it's time to ask yourself, will my dreams live again? Because they're up on the shelf. Get them off the shelf and dust them off. Dust them off. Say, so you know what? I ain't let nobody hold me back. I had somebody in my life I thought was for my life. It turned out not to be for my life. So I got to reach back up on the shelf and dust my dreams off. Because we'll put ourselves on hold just to make other people wholesome, feel wholesome. God got something better for you. That's all. He's trying to get you to open your hand and release that just so he can put something in there. Something better for you. The, the answer is undoubtedly yes. When God's power breathed on you, it wasn't too late to accomplish your dream. God has birthed something deep down inside of you. When God asked Ezekiel, can the bones live? Ezekiel responded, oh, Lord, thou knowest. And this was in the face of seemingly impossible odds. God's word can rebuild, restore, and revive dead dreams. He's the ultimate architect. Only God can breathe life into old mantles and make them brand new. Them old mantles that have been passed on to you for years. And God told them to make them brand new. Seek God. Follow his voice. Think about his plan that he has for you. He will lead you into your destiny because he holds your future in his hand. God. It's the God who breathes spirit into the old things. And make them new that we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus. He can do this. Seek God. And God will create a new thing in the middle of your valley. Look at that. David was in the middle of his valley, y'all. He had just fought Goliath and took Goliath off the scene. And then all of a sudden, he finds himself in the valley. And Goliath's cousin them starts showing up. The annex, the giant. <laughs> they, they showing up now. And they're cutting up other giants, showing off. Ain't that that boy that took a... Uh, that's the first thing he said. Ain't that the little boy that took uh, Goliath out? He ain't going to do that to me. I bet you won't try that with me. 
You know how it is when you go around people and you get in a situation. Somebody always got to be super better than you are. But I'm going to tell you, there's always somebody better than, uh, better than you are out there, too. I, I tried that before. I was acting like a little bully one time, and I bust somebody inside the head on the playground. And I thought I was a playground bully and a king until a, a, a bigger bully than me came. He was shorter than me, too. He was shorter than me, and he came on there, and he picked that nice little rock up, that little stone one, the edge on it, and he cracked me in my head, and I ran home, man, that blood stuff. I, I ran home, man. Y'all think I'm joking. I ran home and said, Ma, I said, he was this tall. <laughs> she said, go on back out there and shut the screen door on me. And, and I felt so embarrassed because he was like that. He was a little Mike Tyson. He had, you know how you already got muscles and stuff? He wasn't even flexing. He already had muscles. And he came on the playground, and I asked him, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I tried to get deep on it. What are you doing here? And he was like, I'm not scared of you, man. I said, you is scared of me. I got up on him, and he picked that rock up. He said, you better get out my face. <laughs> and I didn't get out his face. Pow, right inside my head. See? That blood, boy, when you see that blood, you know it's time to run. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't his. It was mine's. So what I'm trying to say is you can be in a valley amongst all these people that got want to harm you, that don't know the Lord either. They dry it all. You got to find a way to communicate with them and breathe life into them through with the word of God. Use the word to breathe life into them. And this was Le Ezekiel's assignment. He had to breathe in them. God had so much for him, but he had to do what God asked him to do first. God was trying to create a new thing in the middle of his valley. He said, behold, what is that? I, I would do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. Rivers in the desert. Look, it's Isaiah 43, 19. It's the time to build. Isaiah 43, verse 19. This is the moment, saints. Time for every dry bone to live again. But we got to submit to God first. We got to allow him to breathe on you again. You know, some people say, I don't want to do it again. I already been baptized once. I ain't going down no more in Jesus' name. I ain't doing that no more. I don't think I need to do it twice. If the Bible tells you to do it right the first time, if you do it right the first time, you have to do it two and three times. But we had to be taught. Somebody had to breathe life into our bones. Somebody had to tell us the right way about serving God. There is a right and a wrong way. You know, everybody's rocking around talking about I'm Jehovah. I'm Catholic. I'm all this, all these names. But the Bible only tells you to be ye holy as I am. And we put all these names and titles uh, and all that. He said, be ye holy as I am. Can you do that? You don't have to do anything else. Father God, man, I'm going to pray, man. Father God, in the name of Jesus, man. Mm. Come on, somebody got to feel this prayer. I surrender to you, God. Mm. You are El Shaddai. That's what he is. God is El Shaddai. You are the Lord Almighty. My strength is found in you and only you. You're the Lord that leads me in the right path. He leads me in all pathways. God's my heart to accomplish all the things that he calls. And he wants to come out of me. There are some things that are inside his land dome and some dreams, some visions. But God said he will accomplish He will accomplish these things through you. For his glory. Your name is magnificent, God. Your power is ever so matchless. You are a holy king, and death could not hold you down. Sometimes I got to declare it. And death has no power over you. Stagnation has no authority over you. One word from you, and you can release me from any type of bondage I may be experiencing right now. In the name of Jesus. You are the alpha. You are the mega. Somebody, I'm talking to somebody. You are my starting point and you're my ending point. My soul praises you forever. Sometimes we got to be reminded. You are the restorer of dead dreams and dry bones. And my heart will worship you forever. In Jesus' mighty name, I am forever yours. Amen. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. His hand, our bones. The Lord was upon me. 
carry me out into the spirit of the Lord. Set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Has anybody heard anything today? 